Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's press conference here on Zoom. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. We'll get around to as many of you as we can. We're going to do today's press conference in two formats, two, two parts either. TV's first, newspaper second. We'll start with Carve for the Sky Sports News. Carve, I'll mute yourself and away you go. Uh, first of all, Thomas, um, obviously you've had two weeks in a row. What kind of reaction have you seen from your players in training and what kind of reaction and response do you expect to see tomorrow? Well, not much because we did not train a lot. Yesterday was a day we used for recovery and today the guys who played and travelled uh, um, in, in played 90 minutes in Turin did not do a lot today, so business as usual. I know it's uh, it's it's uh, always about reactions and talking about reactions and what we demand. We always demand the very best from us, uh, no matter if we lost or won uh, before. Nobody likes to lose. In the opposite, we hate to lose. And um, but uh, we looked it up. We lost against Arsenal and and after that uh, in, in in Wembley uh, two matches also in last season and then we came back strong against Leicester. You know, sometimes it's it's like this. First of all, we need to respect also the quality, personality, and and uh, of our opponents. And then it's about like we're not also not really bad. And it's it's not a long time ago that we played very very good matches. Remember our first second half, for example, in Tottenham. Then the cup game with ten changes in the in the starting lineup against the strong Aston Villa side who won after that 1-0 in Old Trafford. It is not long ago. It just feels long ago because there are so many games in between, but it's not long ago. And I think we, we miss a little step from 90% to maybe 100%. It's not that we, we, are, um, we, we have to question ourselves uh, deeply and, and start to doubt each other. It's, it's about stepping up, of course. It's about uh, improving. The games were very, very difficult, uh, very different from each other uh, into the extremes. Man City is about high pressing and ball possession. Juventus is about deep defending and no ball possession. So we played against the extremes and what we can predict is we play against another extreme team in high pressing now with Southampton. And the one thing that is the most important to, to keep a clear head and be well prepared and this is what we do. Um, Ralph Hasselhutl uh, was speaking very warmly about you yesterday. He, he said uh, you are good friends and you've known each other for, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of him as a character and what do you make of the job that he's done at Southampton? Well, we meet each other now regularly because we played against each other in, in Bundesliga and now here. And you, we meet, of course, in, in, in coaches' meetings. That's that's pretty much it. But it's 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 also a lot over the years. And he's a very friendly and very um, and and we met once in Paris for for some days. So uh, very nice guy, very humble, very very entertaining, also very funny guy. And um, well, the teams he he he, he trained have uh, also uh, always the same philosophy. It's high intensity, it's very aggressive, it's about ball recoveries and, and, and this is it and this on a, on a very high level. So they have a very fast team, a very aggressive team. They have good results against both Manchester teams and uh, so this is what we are expecting. Good coach, good team and uh, a nice guy but um, that does not count for 90 minutes. Can I just ask you some um, injury news as well? Because Mason Mount and Reese James were both included in the England yeah. squad yesterday. Uh, was that done with your blessing? Does that mean that they are fit to play this weekend? You would assume so, no. But uh, yeah. I was, I was uh, when I when I saw it, I thought that maybe maybe uh, Reese goes with a water polo team for England because uh, right now he trains in the pool. So I was a bit surprised, but uh, I understood that he was selected for the for the football team. So this will not happen because uh, Reese is training in the pool right now. So my understanding, my last information is that he will not go. So it can only be a misunderstanding, nothing else. And for Mason, of course, uh, Mason is in the squad. Mason is back. It was not a long injury, it was a minor injury. And we're happy that he's back. And then it's uh, obviously a given that he's, that he's nominated and he's happy to be nominated and will give everything to do his best in, for his England squad. Do you think it was the right decision for, for Ben Chilwell 
not to be in the squad uh, at, at this stage of the season. For him personally? Yeah. No, it would be nice to be selected. He's happy to play for, for England. He's proud to play for England. He has the quality to play for England. He had a bit of a rough start, was a bit unlucky and, and he has his own story like every player has his individual story. And um, this is it, but I can understand that he has to, and, and for sure Chile understands that he has to earn it and earn, he needs to earn it with minutes. And he did not have too many minutes, so we can understand why he's not selected. It's not a big drama. I think he can accept and um, there's no, no need to, to, to worry about it. Um, once he plays more minutes for us and plays with quality, he will, be, he, will be, he will have the chance to be selected again. But it's one step after another. Last one. Just, yeah, just a final, final one from me, uh, Thomas. Just on Tony Libramento, he, mm. he's been playing so well for Southampton. Was it a tough decision to let him go this summer? And you've reportedly still got a buyback clause, so that shows how highly rated he was by the club. Yes, of course he was highly rated. We, we, we did everything to, to keep him here, to show him his future and his possibilities to, to, to compete also for a position in our team. He decided to go. That's his decision. You sometimes have to accept. There are not too hard feelings because uh, we can show him possibilities and, and then it's on, on the player. He was, of course, competing with Reese James, with, with, um, with Aspie on the, on the right wing back position I think it was an ideal position for him to fight and, and the group is not too big so there was a, a big chance also to make it all the way if um, Tino decided um, uh, to go it's, it's fair enough he, he, he does very well we wish him all the best and, um, and, and this is what it is of course we, we, we saw the potential he decided to go another way and fight for his place in, in Southampton and, and that's how, how the business is James Avenger Thomas, do you feel like standards have slipped in the last two games or has it just been the case that you've come up against two really good opponents? Two very different opponents, like I said, two very extreme style of play and very different style of play from Man City high pressing ball possession to no ball, almost no ball possession and deep defending from, from Juventus. But of course, the, both clubs have personality, both clubs have experience, both clubs have, have the players to, to hurt you. This can happen in any match of football, we know this. If it happens, it does absolutely not feel good. And uh, did we play at our very best level? No. So we had the feeling that, that Manchester City made us underperform on this very day, on the very special day at Stamford Bridge. Uh, we felt us very well prepared and, and uh, in total different circumstances um, um, uh, to play against Juventus. Could we reach our very best level? No, it's hard if you're, if you're responsible for, for the rhythm, if you're responsible for the energy, if you're responsible for the intensity. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's a concentration game in the end, you know. Uh, it reminds me 100% to our game in Bucharest when we played against, against Atletico. And, and we finally ended up to play, to play almost a similar game. Um, and win it 1-0 by a goal that was ruled out by offside and then given by VAR and it was a bicycle kick so we did not have much chances maybe no chance at all and we did not give chances away but don't forget it was like it was in Bucharest it was without spectators so it was maybe also a bit easier to be calm to be focused to be concentrated and, and, and now it gets a bit tougher to play away games in, against big teams like this with in this kind of personality we will not be the last team to, to lose against Juventus. And it was like, if you, if you, the, the difficulty and the danger in these matches is that the result in the end tells you the story about the match. If you lose 1 0, you're not sharp enough, you, are, you lack intensity, you are, um, uh, you, and, and everything falls into place when I mean, you know the result. If you win this 1 0, if you, or maybe Romelu scores and you, 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 you go away with a draw, you go like, we stayed calm, we stayed passionate, we waited until this one chance came. And you, 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 you speak about this game very, very differently. It is very hard to constantly be. Um, 
responsible for the intensity for the attacks and 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 uh, against a, a team that that defends so deep it was almost the same first half than we played with Manchester City and it was very very hard for Manchester City to create chances and expected goals against us it was almost impossible and the the door for Manchester City opened with a deflected shot so yeah of course we need to defend this goal much better it was a absolutely poor goal in the present we gave away and and this is the lesson from there on it's it's i feel that we need to step up again like like you said from 90% to 100 um which is not the easy thing but this is is of course on us to 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 improve and and uh, to yeah to 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 raise the level again Romelu has seemed a little bit isolated in the last two or three games. Yeah. Is there still an adjustment taking place from his part, but also from the team's part as well, in terms of yeah. trying to work to his best strengths? Yes and no, because we are, he was he was fully involved in the very first game against Arsenal, and then he was uh, like also if you if you look at the second half against Tottenham, he was involved in in chances, in assisting for for Timo Werner, in uh, in first half in connection with Mason Mount. I think that that. Also, football right now is about connections, and and Romelu, I feel a strong connection with Mason Mount. I feel a strong connection with Matteo Kovacic. They look for each other, and and they have a genuine understanding. And everybody else lacks it a little bit. And we need to learn. We need to adapt. We need to create and 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 understand each other better, of course. But yeah, like I said, we had games where he was fully involved. Now we had games like against Manchester City. Every of course, he was isolated. Manchester City made him be isolated, and and our build-up play and our transition made him be isolated. Of course, there will always be matches like this in 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 Juve where there is no place to go, there is no place to be involved. Sometimes you have, as a there, th- these games exist, so this is maybe not the reference game for for link-up play. You know, we would talk maybe totally different if he if he would have scored in the uh, in the eighty something minute. It's normally a chance that he that he normally scores for us, and then he would be again the decisive player. So yeah, it's it's right and and um, it's right and nothing major to worry about. But we are aware of it. John Southall, Pablo. Hi, Thomas. Just one on on Reece James. Are you slightly surprised that nobody from the England squad was in touch with you before? No, it's normal. It's normal. Imagine if every national coach calls the uh, calls the coach, and I'm very bad in answering calls anyway. So nobody could reach me, and then they go mad at me and be angry. So it's better. But but of course the club is in touch, and and uh, and uh, Peter Cech sorted these things out. This can this can happen. How significant a factor has it been that Mason Mount has missed the last two games and you've lost both games? Is it is it a big contributing factor that? Yeah, but we need to be we need to be careful. We we took him out at halftime because he had a bit of a, a, a rough halftime at Tottenham, and everybody was so highly speaking about us in the second half. And he was not on the pitch, and suddenly he's missing. And now he's the. It's not on single players. Of course, we want to have Mason, and of course, we know how what an energy he gives, and of course, we miss him. But we cannot start reducing our performances on looking at the players who are missing. Do we miss NG? Yeah, of course, every team in the world misses N'Golo Kante. Do we miss uh, Mason if he is on his best level? Of course, that's why he plays for us. That's why he's a tough player. Do we miss Reese James? Yes, of course. And still, there would be a selection to take and we could only start with 11 players against Juve. And maybe we would have started without Mason, but then we have him from the bench. Do we miss Christian Pulisic? Of course we miss sprints and intensity. But it needs to be on the best level then and it needs to be a good fit. So we have a, a squad and we have the uh, the duty as me as a coach to find solution and it's it's possible to win games without Mason Mount and and hopefully he knows that that with how much respect and how much I love him and I want him to be in the team but but the, the if if he is injured we need to win games without him and and it's uh, exactly the same with Angolo and Christian Pulisic and and Reece James I'm sure he does the, 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 you said the players look mentally and physically tired yeah. in midweek is that slightly concerning at this stage of the season yeah but also logical maybe everybody feels like this if you play so much and play for national teams and have all the traveling it feels a little bit like this it does not mean that I'm absolutely right but it feels a little bit 
um, that we carry a bit of weight on our shoulders mentally or like from maybe from our own expectations or, or you name it can be so yeah um, somebody told me several years ago if, 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 if players look like this you can threaten them or you can calm them down and in 99% of the cases it's, it's better to calm them down uh, and and I will never forget this sentence. So that was a, I was a youth coach. So the tendency is in the moment here also keep everybody calm and 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 uh, trust in what we do and what we are and 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 support the group and let the support and let the players also support each other and find their way out. We're looking, I think, for the last ten percent. You name it. You name it. Being sharp, being mentally maybe a bit more fresh or enjoy a little bit the, what we do but it's hard to enjoy games against Juventus this is what they do to you and this is like and we're not the first team to experience it and maybe not the first English team to experience it in, in Italy and in, 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 in against Juventus this is what they do and, and you, sometimes you suffer mentally in these games because things don't go so fast like we want to we want to uh, have them happen so it's uh, I, I want to what I want to say is we, we should focus on the solutions not too much on the problems because the problems are not too big the results are not what we expect and, and still it's um, we still have trust in ourselves and we have our reason last question in the broadcast section Adam Cotier hi Thomas um, hi. you mentioned Southampton's high press and the way they, they play obviously they haven't won yet this season how do you counteract that? What sort of things will you be looking for from your players when you're up against Southampton? <laughs> I will not tell you. We have uh, developed some ideas and some uh, solutions. Of course, uh, to, to deal with this uh, high pressure. Um, so, in general, you need to be absolutely aware of it. You don't have time to, to, to think when you're on the ball. We need to anticipate situations we need to be um, very very good in timing and distances of our passing if we want to escape high pressure in our own half of course you have uh, there are various uh, possibilities it can also be a possibility to use long balls and to escape high pressing so but then you need to have a good positioning before cannot talk about it now in details but the most important is that we are aware and and we don't we don't judge teams by their names or by their ranking or by their previous results but we talk about what we see and their behavior and we need to we need to be be aware like i said of an aggressive and intense team in our half and just finally on, on your team you've had 10 different goal scorers you've scored 12 goals in, in the premier league what does yeah. that say about your team you're not relying on just one or two players are you to Goals. In the moment, which is maybe a good thing, in the end, we want also to rely on guys who constantly score, so you want to always have everything. So hopefully we, we, we find uh, Romelu and our other strikers more often that they bring them into, into chances. And this is what we are up to, to, to create chances to attack. Uh, no matter where on the pitch, no matter if we have the ball or, or our opponent have the ball. So we raised our intensity against the ball in the opponent's half against against uh, Juventus, which was a very good thing. We have a lot, a lot of high ball recoveries from a very good counter pressing. Unfortunately, we could not take advantage. Of, unfortunately, we we missed opportunities to to. Um, to create chances out of out of high ball wins because there were a lot. This was uh, part of uh, of the game where we wanted to improve and and um, yeah, we want to also to have the answer to the pressing from Southampton with counter pressing and 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 uh, to give them a taste of their medicine also because it's also part of our game. Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section. We're now going to move on.